Oh, hello. Welcome back to the show. It's uh, day 55 of putting this uh, SLO build together. Well, not really. While you were gone, I fixed the uh, wire here that was too short, and I got my uh, ground bus run, you know, coming from the power supply board, going to the star ground established of the presence, and then returning back to this board. So, uh, now we gotta, well, who? Oh, it is hairy up in here. We gotta start connecting these guys to their respective uh, tubes, and uh, whew, I expect that this should be relatively complete today. Whether or not that'll be in this video, I don't know. I have this shielded cable. It has to come up here to this pot. So I guess I'm gonna start there. Okay, I gotta start getting all this hair into place. Hopefully, I can only do this once. Yeah, this is so surgical. I'm gonna be here a while. Well, at this point, I've got all of one tube hooked up. Completely hooked up because the heaters are in place. I feel like I have a strategy down now. A strategy where I take the respective wire, in this case we have V21, kind of size it up based on where I think I want it to run. Put the slightest little black mark at the strip point. Then I have to grasp the wire in my needle nose and take this particular stripper that's calibrated for the size of the wire, pince, tug, and start pulling it back just like that. I don't need to take the insulation all off because I give it a twist, tin the very tip of it, and cut it to length. Then I negotiate it into place, start wrapping around that tube socket tongue. Struggle because, you know, tiny little wires in tight spaces. And solder it in. I'm 35 minutes in now, probably about 30 minutes of actual work here. Oh, I still have to connect whatever the frig this is. And I've got two tubes done. I guess I got another 45 minutes to go to finish this uh, run across the top. Oh boy, I'm getting there, bud. One tube left. And I went with different color codes this time. Uh-oh. Oh, v 53s empty. I forgot a line. Oh, it is gonna be a pain in the arse to get a wire in there now, bud. Well, I got plenty of pieces. Well, it's 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 at the edge enough that maybe, uh, just maybe. Come on, bud, get in that hole. Okay, crisis averted. I got that wire in place. And it's an important one too, because it spans all these three and eight. We need a long boy piece because he's doing an auto of spanning. All right, I'd like to wrap this. All right, that's on there now. Huh, four tube wires left. Keep having to search for my tools every operation. All right, all the signal connections are on all the tubes. Doesn't look quite as epic as I would hope, but I think this looking epic, that ship sailed and got stuck in the Suez Canal. Right now it's about function. All right, so now I'm gonna go ahead and connect the EQs. And these wires are long enough I can get in there with my quick stripper. So white is treble one. Huh, huh, huh. Treble one is white and it connects to the yellow wire. I should have done those the other way around. Oh. Now the master volume connections. Hmm, of course they're backwards. I might want to fish them up underneath here. Come on, you can do it. Ah, seriously? Ha, huh. you better look at it. Yeah, should do. Now let's get those heaters on there. That's gonna be somewhat surgical again also. All right, so I don't have as much slack as I'd ultimately like to have because I'm anchoring it over here in a strange way. Now I gotta do that classic cliche thing where we uh, bend the lugs on four and five in together, give them a twist so they face each other. That should do just fine. Except we gotta get a linkage ready. I wanna keep it tight as possible. Oh, 
Dirty, dirty heater connection. Lucky for us, it doesn't need to be that nice. Tack it down. All right, pull up on this. Make it pretty, it's pretty, oh so pretty. Now I have to get this over to here. Now we have a situation where we kind of want to clear this resistor here. So we might not be able to pull this as tight as we'd like. Now, do I like the clearance that I have here? Not really. I guess I'm going to unravel one more wrap. The amp that is assembled with tweezers. Now this one we can tighten back up a little bit. Center out that resistor. Ah, this is a tricky one. But this is the last heater connection right here. This one will be a breeze. Hey. Okay. I was hoping these heater connections would look a little bit better, but they'll do. They'll do. And that's, you know, ideally better than those bus bars that they have. The bus bars look good, but you're supposed to coil these things. Ugh. What's left? I think this main board's almost completely hooked up. I can bolt it down now, I think. I'm gonna do just that. I'm gonna make sure these bolts clear all these. Yeah. Some of these spots are tight. Like right here. Uh-oh. I can't get the bolt under this capacitor. Um... Oh boy. And hey, I didn't put this kit together, man. This is uh, some other guy. I'll make sure these connections here are clear. All right, let's pull this back into place. You know, we're gonna have to do a thing where we glue these capacitors because they have to float like they vibrate, right? We don't really want them to vibrate because that, um, it's called piezoelectric interference. Your components vibrate, cause microphonics. And these ones are especially susceptible, these big beasts over here. Now over here, we have some last final connections to make, like this, uh, that goes to the, uh, oh yeah, the switches. This is part of the clean circuit. I kind of wish that was underneath there. I think I'm going to put down another one of those launch pads. Yeah, that'll do right there. Oh, you're being wonderful. So I need to get that right there. Cut it at the end of this mark here. Pull back and remove insulation. Need a touch of heat shrink. Zip strip. Uh, strip this back. Oh, so close. So close. Then need a little bit of tinning to get that through that hole. A nip on the end. That's the last audio connection right there. I think you know it. S is for the foot switch. Normal is the one that has to activate. It's going to hover up here. We're like on a home stretch here, bud. A home stretch. We need to go back over here to the power supply center. We need to establish the star ground. And to establish the star ground, I need to take this terminal strip and I need to put a piece to connect the two bits together. Oh, conveniently, there's a piece of 18 gauge copper wire, right? Just hanging out. Overkill, it doesn't have to be 14 gauge copper wire, but it doesn't hurt. Except for the fact that uh, I didn't get the geometry correct. Ta-da. Just a linkage them together. You're gonna move on me, aren't you? Come on. Well, apparently the thing to do is tin the whole wire, eh? This thing's probably hot. That's okay. Just have to make it so that we can still get a bolt in there, and, uh, yeah. Solder is not sticking to the terminal itself. That is irritating me. But instead, it's soaking through this side. Soak through to the other side. Okay, I think I got it. I think I got it. This is gonna be a little hot. All right, now we're gonna mount this here. We've reached the uh, point of no return here. Once I get some of these components mounted into place, yeah, they're not coming back off. Is that fucking stripping out? What is going on here? Are those cheap frigging bolts stripping? Hmm, need to be careful. Oh, it's spinning out is what's going on. Hmm, yes, yes. All right, up the daisy. Whoa. That should be good. Bend it up a little bit. Put the rest of the nuts on this uh, power supply board. Uh-oh, these ones over here aren't gonna cooperate, are they? Oh, our ground bus. We need to get these wires attached to the star ground, bud. I think you know it. All right, gotta get those four groundy boys on the star ground. And in relative order, this one. What are you doing? Go through the hole, bud. This one, and this one, then the bigger boy. Now, a frig ton of solder. Problem is I got a bunch of slop sticking out here. All right, that ground should be good now. Zap it up. It makes this one cable feel like it's a touch too long. I wanted that to be more in sync. 
That'll have to do. Ah, that's a nice solid ground chunk now. Does I change trudges here? It's just about but near. Oh boy. There's just one more thing left to do in here. Or oh, wait, I gotta connect the friggin' oh boy. Stop gaps. Hmm. Well, that's gotta be tricky. I need this guy to strip here. Oh, well, I just <laughs> snoot that off, eh? Nice. Imagine applying power to the tubes this resistor missing and they just instantly go into meltdown because they have no negative bias and those nice lines just got messed up it looks silly now we'll wait for it to cool down then we'll reform it same with this guy this guy doesn't even need heat shrink it's so close now i feel like it's safe to say there's one last thing we'll have to do and that's get the dc board all hooked up and the dc board has one two three four five six seven eight connections nine a ground ac in dc out and two lighting I'm supposed to add another fuse to this, along with the lighting. Banks up right here. AC goes on there. You're gonna have to split these wires up quite a bit. I can't concentrate with all this piss inside of me. Hello and welcome back to another broadcast day. My name's Irrelevant, this is Do All The Things, and we are continuing the ultimate SLO build. Last video ended a bit suddenly because I broke for dinner and then something came up after. Uh, basically a shipment of Russian tubes came in. I spent uh, the rest of the evening uh, sound testing them all. But on the final leg of the journey, we're hooking up the DC board. Oh yes, the DC board. And I have determined that all these wires shall come in from this side. It seemed intimidating at first. I wasn't sure how I wanted to hook it up. But I was able to determine these wires would all come in from this side. So we'll start uh, splicing it in like this. And then finally we'll hook up the AC. So we have a uh, DC out to the front heaters, ground reference for the capacitive center tap. And then these two guys right here go out to the LED accent lights. I just have to finish off this thing by adding another fuse I got these little uh, PC mount fuses I already got one here all right so that's basically those two uh, resistors are for that accent lighting it's two banks of two resistors 100 ohm uh, regulation on each bank that brings it to about 57 milliamps which is a little bit more for one diode that's just over 20 milliamps a diode but I torture tested those particular LEDs uh, well over 20 about 25 milliamps each and they, they seemed fine ran them for hours they didn't burn out so otherwise we would need something like 120 ohm or something more specific that I don't have in stock but I do have a fuse on that lighting circuit just in case something shorts out with it uh, it's not going to take down the audio supply going to add another for the DC heaters one amp should be fine because it's going to be drawing 600 milliamps unless for some reason we stick something crazier in there but then that's going to throw off the buy balance and calibration of this supply so we're going to avoid it I don't think this guy's going to be playing with oddball tubes like I do so it's going to solder up that fuse to the main positive that is the main positive right yeah that should do not sure if i like it like that but all right let's get the vice and do this proper off camera all right we gotta start splicing in these wires gotta strip little pips off well more than that freak it's hard to get at these guys now to have this calibrat oh this is gonna be tricky Okay, let's see if we can't uh, get these spliced on in there. I can't even see where I'm plugging these wires in. Of course, they're gonna spread out on me. Oh boy, we might need to disconnect these tie downs so that I can get some slack to work with and then put it back in after. Yeah, no, this isn't happening like this. Oh, well, another zap strap wasted. I've gone and done that thing again where I've made my tolerances too tight and now it's making it impossible to work with. Like trying to get both these wires through two holes at the same time when the wire is as big as the hole and if you tin the end so it goes through smoothly, it's gonna make it just too fat for the hole. Oh, there it goes. Oh, finally. All right, the heater supply is connected now. I imagine the next thing would be the balance wire. That should be easy. It's just right here. All right, that's two. Six more connections to go. Six more tiny little connections. Come on. Oh. When one stray strand, get one stray strand, you have to stop and re-spool. Oh, got it. Okay. Very surgical. Laying out these tiny little wires. <laughs> All right, lighting hooked up. Oh, just the AC now. Now, should I bring the AC in through the top or through the bottom? 
probably feeling the bottom at this point because there's these large lugs to work with here and really uh, it involves getting it you know over top of the rectifier which there might be enough slack for but we're bringing it around the rectifier yeah it would work let's mock up its seating here yeah i guess it could go over top it would be better to solder it from over top than on bottom then on bottom would come snoot like this yeah, I think I'm going on bottom. It would just be less complicated, more ergonomic. Pretty much at the very tips of these guys will get tinned. Polarity is not an issue. This is effectively all hooked up now. Got to get these wires back into its uh, holder. Oh, I kind of maybe would have want that to come under there, but that ship sailed now. But then, you know, this can come over this way now. Uh-oh, got a solder blob conflicting with... Uh, oh, I'm gonna have to offset this. So if you don't see what's going on here, I have these uh, these cable straps here, and there's actually, there's a bit of a gap in them. Like if you look, even if I close them down so that they're nice, like they'll go at an angle, but there's a gap in there. So that gap's filled in by a nylon nut acting as a spacer, and then it's gonna press down on that. There, it sits nice now. I think I can screw it down now, or nut it down, I should say. That sounds dirty. Huh. Oh, frick. Got a little bit of spin there. Hate it when that happens. Brrr. It's just a Phillips. I think that's it. Just want to arrange these wires a bit. Make this come down and around so it's not touching anything. It's touching that capacitor. Do not. Some of these are not as elegant as I would like. Spread this out for temperature. Whew. More zip ties. I'd like to secure these better. They're so willy-nilly. Not at all like my standards would dictate. But I want to keep these red and green supplies separated, even though they're going through the same hole together over here. Maybe after testing, I'll push those wires together, see if any sound comes out. If not, then I'll bank them together on this connector here, and then I'll be able to secure those nice. So there's like one connection left to make here, and that's the standby switch. Here we go. Unless I'm overlooking something, the last solder joint. <whistles> Connected via a cute loop. Cute loop. I think that's it, buds. I seriously think that's it. I might take a little bit of time to give her a, a little bit of the old stare down and complications. I might take some time to give her a little bit of the old stare down and contemplations to make sure. See if I can clean some of the debris out. That's the problem. You're soldering on this and crap falls with the chassis. It's like, well, how do I clean that out later? I need, a, a, I need to take it out and give it the air gun. <laughs> Weather's getting nice. I probably could. Huh. Everything's strapped down. Everything's wired. I see no reason why this amp won't work now. Oh, boy. Oh, ho, ho. How many hours of surgery was that? Good thing I didn't have to do it all in one shot. I estimated this amp would take about 16 hours after the first couple of days, but no, no, I think I'm over 30, 32 maybe. Yeah. Now I understand why hand-wired amps are so expensive, while real Soldano is like three or four grand. Cause yeah, if, uh... You know, part of me is doing this as a bit of a favor, but damn, if someone had to, if someone wanted to hire me to do this, oh boy, I'd have to charge them a few hundred dollars just for my services alone. Still, it might be a bit cheaper than a real Soldano, but it's hard to tell, man. I'd have to start crunching numbers. Because we scrapped and salvaged a lot of parts out of another cheap amp, so if we were building this 100% from new... Heh. <sighs> I think I should clean my workbench. It is just... It is a mess. Yeah. All right, we'll be back. Hi, my name's Relevant. This is Do All The Things. Welcome to the show. And if you've been following the comedy, you know that I have been crafting a Soldano slow clone. Soldano, Soldano, Soldano. It's a slow clone, but it's for playing fast. And I have pretty much, I believe, finished it. And I can see no reason now why I can't turn it on. So let's go ahead. What I'm gonna be doing here is dry firing it. No tubes, just get power to it and see that everything is kinda, the voltages are sitting and flowing the way they should be before I actually put tubes in. This is a bit nerve wracking. This is gonna be the first time I fired up. I know the transformer and certain things are good. It's just, uh, you know, 
Is there some stupid little detail, something I got wrong, something I overlooked, you know? It happened in the Jubilee build. I had like one capacitor in, in, in the wrong spot and, well, that was a complicated map I devised myself. This thing's pretty straightforward, everything connects. So, um, like, yeah, like... Ho, ho, ho. <laughs> the lights in the back. <sighs> we have a pilot light. Those accent lightings are working. It was funny. As soon as I turned it on, just this blue glow just <laughs> right against the workbench. There's too much light in here for you to really see. Look at my hands. Hopefully that's gonna be nice. All right, let's uh, probe around some voltages here. We know the DC board's working because we're getting those blue lights. Let's grab a ground lug. Right there should do. Against the standby. 528. Well, that's with no load. But hey, we have uh, 700 volts of capacitance here, so. Against ground, any given heater should give us three volts. What, oh, we're getting no heater? Uh, oh yeah, that would be AC. Yeah, so we know we got heater. None of this should be powered up yet because the standby is not in place. I'm gonna test heater AC, 6.8 volts, no load. Let's test heater DC, which should be uh, here on here. 7.8 volts. That's why we have those dropping resistors. As soon as we load that down, it should all right, let's hit standby. Nothing's melting, sparking. 525 still after standby. B plus, 508. But that's the filtered B plus. Let's check the pin threes on the tubes. 523, 523. Again, with no load. There should be something on the various anodes of the tubes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I guess I can put tubes in it. Oh, bias circuit. That'd be right about here. Negative 10 volts. Let's turn the bias knob all the way to the other side. Negative 17, 10 to 17, hmm. Well, that's after these resistors here. Where's the actual bias circuit? Ah, yes, we have this 220K resistor here. I might have to adjust on that. Oh yeah, it's only negative 28 volts after rectification. That might not be enough. We might have bias run away on us. Ugh, that's the only problem with the way that how intricately this tapestry has been whipped together. Good luck servicing this amp now. There's just so much going on. Uh, how about across the screen grids? 529, there's no voltage drop, so 529. We might have to uh, reduce the value of this guy to get our bias where we need it. Bias out, bias ins right there. Yeah, it's only getting negative 24 volts. Okay, I'm expecting hilarity to ensue. Got a set of JJ E34Ls here for testing porpoises. Oh, those are fresh sockets, so tight. Oh boy. <sighs> Hook up here, a glitchy arse bias meter. Jolson needs to grab ground. Gonna bay nay 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 All right, we'll grab a testing point on one of these tubes and uh, kick on standby and yeah, 120 instantly. Let's uh, bring this pot all the way to the other side. Overload. Yeah, we haven't got anywhere near enough bias voltage. So that's gonna be fun, yeah. I'm going by what the manual said, 220K. 220K is too much. One of the next steps down might be like 100K. So we're gonna take a 220, put it in series here. That should give us more bias voltage. What are we getting now? 55, that's better. Over here where it distributes, 42. Turn the knob down to 24. That's not the best amount of range. That said, now if we kick on, Ah, 3336. So these tubes are bottoming out. Should be able to dial them into 45 now, or are we gonna run out? Nope, okay. That's decent range for this guy. So 220 divided by two is 110. I have 120 Ks, okay. We can get 45 milliamps out of EL34s. So now just to confirm bias range, I'm gonna toss some 6L6 type tubes that I know bias differently. Oh, some Solvetech WXT pluses should do. All right, those soft techs are in place. Now kick on standby. Oh, wrong meter. All right, uh, 46 going up, going up, going up, going up. Okay, let's start bringing that down. Can we hit target? Oh, yeah, looks like we'll be able to hit target. What is our target though? Looking at our voltage meter, our working B plus off these tubes, 500 volts, bang on, nice. I haven't got preamps in place though. I also don't have a uh, speaker load hooked up. It's not a big deal running an amp a little bit without a speaker load. Uh, we'll get one hooked up there in a second. So before I continue with this amp, 
We're gonna go ahead and change out that bias resistor. 220K is too much. I guess we're putting a 100K in there. First, we're gonna hook up our meter and uh, wait for this to completely discharge because we're definitely, <laughs> definitely touching something very close. Now, is this generating any heat? No, it's cool as a cucumber. That's the question. What, what do I want to put on there? I haven't got any oxides in stock. Do I just want to use a plain uh, 100K metal film? Or in the spare parts left over for this amp, I don't know why, we have 100K, just a carbon, carbon comp. Or, you know, something like this is more robust. That could be a metal oxide. That's at least two watts. So that's a skookum power resistor right there. I wonder if I can get that out without having to pull out the board. Waiting for the circuit to discharge. We can expedite that using a resistor. Let's grab this 100K I have kicking around. Connect to ground, connect to B plus. Oh yeah, the voltage is dropping slowly but surely. Come back in a minute or so. We're at zero volts. You cannot escape your destiny. You must solder on this chassis again. Well, let's see if we can uh, just sneak in here and pull out that resistor without having to remove the board. The answer is yes, but I might have the, comp oh yeah, there we go. And same with these here. Yeah, I got it out. So this stuff starts getting messy. Oh yeah, super effective. The sucker that sucks. It's gonna take a half an hour to get this back in here just cause my sucker sucks. I think my sucker's broken. I think it's all worn out. So we gotta pull this AC line out. Hopefully it comes out cleanly, yes. And of course we're making a mess. Can't be helped. I gotta put his 100K resistor in there cause you know, it came with the amp. Oh, it's great that you're being cooperative. You know, just going into your hole, freaking tight. R9, one watt. Just says use a one watt. That's, is that a one watt or a half watt? I think that's a one watt. Oh great, come out of your hole. All that trouble getting you into your hole, now you're just gonna pop out. All right, the bias supply is redone now. All right, testing. Uh, climbing, 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 climbing. Turn the bias all the way down to see where it bottoms out. 35, bring it up. Okay, we can get our 45 mil with that. That's with how much voltage? 51 volts negative. What's our supply giving us? 71 volts. Uh, what's our other tube say? Oh, other tube runs a little bit hotter, 52. Let's bring that down. All right, I was able to hit target. How much negative voltage? 55, okay. Now let's put the AL34s back in to see if we can hit target with those two. Ugh. Tight sockets, bud. <laughs> Two, three. Okay, but we're still able to hit target. Yeah. Yeah, the other tube's a bit colder. Okay, okay. Let's move forward. All right, we have a set of preamp tubes destined for this amplifier. They came out of the Jet City. He also got to keep those. Uh, three Chinese, a Solvtech WA, and an ECC83S. The WA was supposed to go into the phase inverter. Oh, tight sockets. ECC83S supposed to go into V1. Good booster tube on the Soldano, or at least it is on the Jet City. And then the Chinese go in the three positions. Even though, you know, tube roll dictates three of these are preamp tubes. One's a buffer driver tube for the uh, effects. And then another one is the phase inverter. So V4 and V5 would be similar tubes in my vocabulary. Holy frickin' tight sockets, bud. It's hard to tell if all tubes are glowing. Yeah, I see glow on V1 and V2 DC heaters. We're gonna check on their voltages. This is common negative. So let's see how this DC heater design's doing. Common positive, 5.8. So a little bit low again. 5.7 on the first tube, 5.71. Gee, that is cutting it close. 5.7 is minimum spec. It should be enough. <laughs> Those heaters will last forever. More argument for elevation. Okay, I, I don't know about one ohms. I don't know about one ohms. Why is it 5.82 here? There's voltage drop across that uh, fuse. These need to come up. As much as I hate to say it, I might be revising that circuit in his amp later on. Now let's charge it up. Oh, freaking hell. Something made an awful noise. Something fried. Something, I heard something go schmear. Oh, seriously? Okay, I have no idea what made that sound and I can't see a, a crap stain. So, as suspected, there's something wrong. I, I figured it, I predicted it. There's so much going on here, the margin for error, oof. Blew out our HT fuse. Hopefully that's all we took out. I need to go through this and analyze it and see if I can figure out what I did wrong. Hopefully it does not entail pulling this out. Ah, oh, boy, I wish I was not human and perfect machine that could get something this complicated right the first time. All right, we'll be back 